I've not yet discussed climate change. As you all know, and as the evidence unequivocally demonstrates, human-caused emissions of greenhouse gases from all sources today are the major cause of present-day climate change. We have the power to intervene to reduce those emissions and keep our climate from warming beyond dangerous thresholds. And I mean dangerous for the continued stability of human civilization, as well as the essential and allied problems we face around biodiversity conservation. I must emphasize that we now have strong evidence that climate change is contributing to extinction risks among groups of species that we are not able to do without. In particular, I'll talk about pollinators, where we've shown along with many other researchers around the world that climate change is contributing to the loss of pollinator biodiversity that is now detectable at continental scales across Europe and North America and that indeed many of these species are effectively trapped in a climate vice and that their ranges are being crushed by climate change, they're disappearing. That means their capacity to provide these ecosystem services that determine whether we get to have things like crops in 75% of cases are disappearing as well. This is a most unhelpful development and something we should be very concerned about. We do not have the luxury of time to vacillate about whether we act on climate change. We could have done that a little bit in the 1980s, given that scientific uncertainty could questionably have justified prolonged study rather than immediate action. At this point, however, failing to address climate change and its many impacts, including ecological impacts, is a game of roulette with a loaded pistol. Achieving connectivity in landscapes to enable species to disperse elsewhere or find refuge from extreme weather is part of what we must address in Canada. And this thinking was also clearly front of mind in testimony that you heard recently on protected areas strategy in this committee. Policies for addressing climate change exist and have been tried. They work. They can be refined as we learn new things. They don't impose practical, impractical economic costs. There is no conflict between conservation and the economy. Finally, I'd like to close. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to close on a few simple notes. Paraphrasing an Indigenous saying, we did not inherit the world from our ancestors. We borrowed it from our children. As scientists, we know that there are real impacts for failures to take effective conservation action, but as parents and as citizens, we feel this need more acutely because we see what is coming. We measure it as part of our day jobs. The basic information I've discussed here today and that's published in the IP Best Re uh, Report isn't new with many refinements and improvements. That science was available to all of us 30 years ago. The basic messages that have been conveyed from the scientific community to policymakers ever since have remained largely consistent, again, with important revisions and refinements, but that the time has now come for us to proceed with effective policy action to conserve biological diversity. And the reasons to do so are easily found when we go home to our families at night and remember that we have borrowed the world from our 